Wake up everyone, it's snowing and Santa's here with hot chocolate. It's a December miracle. Who wants frostbite? No one? Fine. But how about some great winter levels? I could go for some of those. I always thought it was interesting that you could slap in a level theme like a snow level into almost any genre. And with the right focus and a few customizations, you could make something that both fits the theme and the game, no matter what type of game it is. I'm starting a series where we go over common level themes and how games create memorable levels from familiar components. And since it's winter, first up is winter levels. Sometimes it's ice, sometimes it's snow, sometimes it's a non-denominational winter holiday, but it's always an option for a level theme. Come inside, warm up by the modder, and let's talk about what makes for a great winter level. But take your shoes off first. Ooh, those are kinda rough. You need to up your shoe game. Might I recommend some Vessies? They're waterproof, and like, really good shoes besides. They're made from Dymatex, a dual climate knit material that keeps your feet cool in the summer, warm when it's cold, and dry all the time. They're lighter than clunky boots and more comfortable too. I'm wearing them right now as my daily shoe, and they're super comfortable and actually do for real keep the snow and rain out. There's always a ton of snow on the ground around here in the winter, and when I go for a walk I don't have to worry about it thanks to my Vessies. And they look better than my old shoes. Check out their holiday sale at Vessie.com slash design doc. Get the style and size you want now before they sell out. If you miss the sale, you can use code design doc at checkout to get 15% off your entire order. Vessi is sponsoring this episode, but I wish I knew about them sooner. Go get some good shoes for the holidays, for you or someone you like who needs good shoes. Link in the description. So, winter levels. There are a bunch of common flavors. Ice lakes and frozen tundra, snowy mountains and arctic woods, ski resorts and Christmas towns. Winter levels have a style of their own that's plain to see. You know what's weird about winter levels though? It's rare to see one show up as the default level. A player's first experience with the game is almost never in an ice storm. Unless we're talking about a game where the whole thing is snow themed, your introduction to a character and the game world is rarely winterized. Oh, sure, there are a lot of games that start off in the snow. Red Dead Redemption 2, Borderlands 2, God of War Ragnarok, Crash 2, Pikmin 2, Uncharted 2, I think you see the asterisk. There's a good reason though. Winter levels can be about more than just a graphical change. Winter levels tend to mess around with the basic mechanics of a game. Slippery platforms, reduced visibility, cold temperature survival. The snow theme comes packaged with a sampler pack of options to tweak the default state of a game. Games where a chunk of the audience already knows what the base experience is supposed to be, like in say, a sequel, seem to have a little more freedom to use an ice theme right out of the gate. Plus, a snowscape is a really easy way to implement a different aesthetic at the start of a sequel, even if you don't want to use any gameplay tweaks. Lots of those sequels start off with a snow level in aesthetics only. The floor isn't ice. You can probably see everything on the map pretty well. The winter is just set dressing. The game isn't trying to trick you. Yet. But aesthetics only winter levels are a small corner of the landscape, they could be so much more. Winter levels have a zillion options to tie in unique mechanics. The variety of options also lets designers adapt the theme to different genres by targeting the kinds of mechanics that those genres find most important. Like in platformers. Platformers are about precision and physics, jumping and running. Winter levels and platformers are an excuse to mess around with the physics of the game. Slippery platforms change how you can run through a level how precise you have to be to jump on whatever it is you're jumping on. Icy physics is a tried and true way of ratcheting up the difficulty a bit once a player has gotten used to how the game controls. Most of the time, icy platforms just have less traction and you keep your momentum for longer. Once you can't stop on a dime or accelerate out of danger normally, that forces you to rethink how you move. It works in 3D as well as it does in 2D. Maneuvering around this bully on top of an ice rink in Super Mario 64 Snowman Land forces you to think carefully about momentum if you don't want to fall in the icy cold water. In a physics-based marble game like Marble It Up, you have to hit patches of ice with enough speed so that you can use that momentum to go up slopes. You also have to account for the inability to turn which can be tricky. If you do things just right though, you can often use ice to gain even more speed. A rare version of platformer ice physics shows up in Rystar 
once you hit ice, you just have no control over your momentum at all. You can jump, but you keep moving forward until you grab onto something, or slam into a hazard. Every game is a little different in exactly how slippery the ice is, or if you have a way to mitigate the effect, like by wearing ice skates or something. What feels slippery enough to be fun, but not so out of control as to become frustrating, will take some trial and error. One of my favorite winter levels doesn't even look like one. Allegro Presto from the original Rayman is a music-themed stage where you're platforming on a musical staff and avoiding sharp notes. It's not at all themed around winter, but every part of the staff has ice physics. Most of the rest of the game is platforming off of rocks and leaves and drums and pencils and other types of ground with normal physics. But this one is start to finish slippery platforming. You can run, build up speed, and fling yourself into the distance in a way that you don't really get to do in any other level in the game. Allegro Presto's icy but not wintry design shows how changing out the platforming physics can make a level stand out from the rest. If you want to see what could be the most elaborate take on what winter levels can do for a platformer, check out Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. It's the sequel to Donkey Kong Country Returns, a sort of revival and reimagining of the SNES Donkey Kong Country games. In the first one, there were a ton of different biomes to platform through. Jungles, beaches, canyons, mines, factories, ruins, and volcanoes. But no ice levels. Weird. The devs took note, and for the sequel, everything gets to be a nice level. The island is invaded by frost vikings, and you have to fight your way back. When you finally return, the island has been frozen over top to bottom. This Last World's main gimmick isn't just that it takes place in a harsh blizzard. Each area is a location from the previous game, now with a nice makeover. Ice jungles, ice beaches, ice factories, and so on. There are a ton of easter eggs too where little bits and pieces of the original worlds will show up in the background. The level design in Tropical Freeze is more than just asset reuse and a nostalgia trip though. Each old stage gets transformed with the ice theme to create a unique fusion. The frozen jungles have much more unstable terrain, crumbling as you pass through. The beaches full of wrecked ships become a sea of glaciers. The cliff sides are now dealing with perpetual avalanches and blizzards. All of the dangerous machinery from the factory area is now dangerous and icy. The fusion of old themes makes every stage stand out while making them all feel more like part of the same world. It's an incredibly clever way to, at the same time, show the player the impact of the villains and to turn a once familiar location into a substantially more dangerous and climactic final world. Ice works in more than just platformers though. Any action game that relies on precise movement can throw a curveball by using a slippery floor. Overcooked is a chaotic cooking game where you and your friends have to go from station to station to get your food made on time. It's very fast paced and intentionally gives you just barely not enough time or resources to comfortably do what you're being asked to do. You're bumping into each other as it is. So once they introduce an ice floor in one of the kitchens, it's completely nuts. Now, Overcooked plays into the chaos for laughs anyway so losing your traction is more funny than frustrating. But you could easily imagine this becoming frustrating in a more serious, higher stakes game. Or a more serious, higher stakes whole genre. Like fighting games, very serious. Not the place for ice floors. If winter is just a backdrop in a fighting game stage, that's totally fine. Winter backdrops show up in tons of places, but most fighting game designers are smart enough not to mess with the mechanics, even with a good excuse. Fighting games are nothing but precision, timing, positioning, and execution. Ice floors are the opposite of all those things. Doesn't work. You ever see an ice floor in a fighting game? Probably not. Well, maybe one. Soul Calibur 2. Ivy's Egyptian Crypt stage has an ice variation complete with a slippery floor. In Weapon Master mode, which is a mix of story-ish events and fights built around modifier settings, some of the fights happen on ice floors that also let you follow the ring way more easily. It's miserable to play on. You can picture it in your mind. It's that bad. As a one-off gimmick though, not a big deal. Driving games are all about precision too, though they can use ice and snow just fine, probably because there's an extra dose of realism to the situation. Forza Horizon 4 has you spending plenty of time on wintry tracks, and the different physics that the track change provides gives an extra challenge, but one that's appropriate to the setting. 
Mario Kart isn't as realistic as Forza, but its ice tracks can be fun. They're usually designed with wider turns, so if the snow makes you drift a little wide, eh, don't worry about it. Worry about the snowmen. Snow-based vehicle segments in other types of games can be fun diversions that change up the gameplay loop for a bit. Half of all the Sonic games have you sledding on a whale, boarding away from an avalanche, or tricking off an icy halfpipe. They give an excuse for some speedy antics, even if only for a bit. And of course, dedicated snowboarding games like SSX are their own whole thing, fine-tuned from the ground up for their physics and controls to feel just right. Now, precise physics-based controls aren't what every genre relies on to be fun. Strategy games are about reacting to seeing enemies flood into your base, killing your dudes. It's a genre about information and logistics. They're about choosing when and where to strike. A winter level in an RTS might not use ice floors, but instead might lean into the visibility problems you get in a blizzard. The fog of war is already a concept in plenty of strategy games, and a blizzard gives a thematic reason to tinker with exactly how the fog of war works. In Fire Emblem, a snowy tile won't slow you down, but weather conditions might throw a wrench into your plans. In The Binding Blade, a blizzard reduces your visibility, which can set you up to be ambushed. Fire Emblem has permadeath, so surprise fights can be especially scary. In other games, snow gives a penalty to movement, which is a serious problem when the point of the game is about moving units around to where they need to be. In The Blazing Blade, a snowstorm can come and go during some missions, and lower mobility for any unit that isn't inside a building. In Advance Wars, you will sometimes be fighting Blue Moon, a sort of Scandinavian northern wintry themed place. The COs all match that theme, some more than others. Each CO has unique powers that tie into their personality more often than not. Olaf's units get to move around normally in snow that slows down everyone else, a big enough bonus for that to count as his entire advantage over the other COs. Shooters can also use a winter stage as a reason to play with visibility and sightlines. It screws around with how you play a shooter if you can't see what you're shooting at. Star Fox Assault's fourth mission takes place on Ficina, an ice world in the middle of a harsh blizzard. Your first goal is to infiltrate a climate control station to clear the weather. The station is blocked off by a barrier, and to disable it, you have to take out multiple generators by yourself on foot or in the Landmaster. You're constantly dealing with low visibility, so you have to rely on your radar. It makes the open plains and cliffsides you're fighting over feel much more confined than they would be otherwise. Besides visibility issues, shooters are also built around a weapon economy. Gaining and losing ammo is a major consideration in how fights are constructed, and Lost Planet uses its icy setting to give a thematic reason to have an unusual economy. Lost Planet takes place on EDN 3, an ice world full of spooky, scary monsters. The game's economy revolves around thermal energy, which you gain from the bugs you fight and need to spend to run vehicles, use the good weapons, and, you know, just stay alive. It's not that hard to keep on top of, but it's at least a novel idea that keeps you constantly on the lookout for more sources of energy. So what about RPGs? They aren't about precision platforming or reacting instantly to changing information at a high level. Movement is just going place to place usually. Fighting is done through menus or through button combos. There's a lot of talking. Winter areas in RPGs often take another path. People come to RPGs to be taken to a strange world to see fun interactions between memorable characters, to hear a story. Winter has been used symbolically in literature forever, and snow levels in RPGs can do the same. An RPG that makes you fight through a snowy wilderness might make the game emphasize the conditions of the season, the desolation of the frozen land, the hostility to life, the isolation. Mario 64 doesn't really get into the philosophical implications of Cool Cool Mountain, but Skyrim does, for cool, cool, the throat of the world. Skyrim isn't lacking for ice areas, but the throat of the world is more important than most. There's an impassable blizzard guarding the mountaintop from the non-chosen ones. But once you've learned how to yell politely, you can clear the skies. Parthenax is meditating at the top and wants to talk to you. He's going to teach you some stuff you'll need later. The blizzard on the throat of the world is just a fancy invisible wall, but at least it makes narrative sense. If you want winter to be less of a complete barrier and more of a nagging enemy to deal with, look at Breath of the Wild. It's a game that makes use of a temperature mechanic pretty often, and harsh weather conditions will affect every part of the game. Your movement is slower, icy enemies freeze you on touch, 
falling into water is a fast track to hypothermia, if you're not equipped to deal with it, you just gradually take damage over time. It's very dangerous in the early game. One of the most difficult parts of the tutorial on the Great Plateau is finding a way to reach the shrine at the top, whose only trick is that it's located in the cold. You can't just brave the cold and tank your way through without doing some prep work. Like the rest of the challenges the game throws at you, there are multiple solutions. You could brute force it and eat something every 30 seconds, but that's risky if you don't know what you're doing. You could find a heat source to carry, like a torch, though that torch takes one of your hands to hold. Better not fight anything along the way. You could cook something with a spicy pepper and get a temporary cold resistance buff. If you look in the old man's diary in his cabin, you will get some helpful recipes you can make. Or if you show him how well you can cook, he might give you a more long-term solution. The temperature mechanics in Breath of the Wild present a significant early challenge that pushes the player to do some creative puzzle solving, which sets them up early for the open-ended nature of the rest of the game. Winter doesn't have to be so bleak though. For a lot of people, winter is a season of holidays, about surrounding yourself with family and friends, coziness, sitting next to a warm fire and watching your neighbors put up Christmas decorations. Winter towns can represent sanctuaries from the cold, and the rhythm of most RPGs need to have sanctuaries anyway. Why not theme one like this? Snowden is a town in Undertale that's kind of perpetually ready for Christmas. The whole town is a big long break between bosses. The hotel, shop, library, and restaurant are filled with shop owners ready to toss story beats at you, and some new people to meet. Of course, if you so choose, you can decide to make the town not cozy at all, but that's on you. Winter weather can impact gameplay in turn-based RPGs pretty easily too. In Pokemon Platinum, the Snowy Route 216 can be a bit of a hassle to deal with. There are patches of deep snow that make running not an option, and all battles in this area will begin with hail weather conditions that will damage your Pokemon on each turn. It's not much different mechanically from a poison effect, just themed to match the location. Ice theme puzzles fit in everywhere. Lots of snow dungeons in adventure games and RPGs use a slidey floor to block off progress for a bit. You've got two main flavors, one where you're pushing a block and one where you're the block. Both involve getting through an area with a zero friction floor to push a pressure plate or something by traveling in straight lines. The moment you pick a direction, you aren't stopping until you hit a wall or a patch of ground. It's a solid puzzle. There's not much else to talk about. It's just there to make you think a few steps ahead about your movement. It's not a bad design by any stretch, but it shows up so many times in ice areas that I have to mention it. Zelda, Final Fantasy, Crosscode, Pokemon, Bomberman, Professor Layton, Pokemon No Ice Edition, Edrian Odyssey, Paper Mario, Chips Challenge, Pokemon Again, Floor Buffer Edition, Okami Den, Golden Sun, It'll Do. It's everywhere. You know I left out a couple great winter levels. Head down to the comments and let's talk about your favorites, and some of the more unusual and inventive ice levels and mechanics that you can think of. Winter levels might seem similar on the surface, but drill down to the individual aspects, and you can mix and match an ice level to create something unique enough to elevate a game.